And so shout out to all of our listeners that are catching this episode premiere. Uh, If this is your first time joining us, welcome again to the Run the Jewels podcast. Yes, uh, just forego some quick housekeeping. Yes. And so the RTJ podcast and lifestyle show was created to spread inspiration and millennial entrepreneurs who want to learn wisdom on how to shine brighter in their careers or their business. And so if you are a business owner, we give uh, tons of jewels of wisdom to business owners. If you are a young professional, shout out to all of our millennials and Gen Zers who are young professionals or entrepreneurs. But even if you're a baby boomer, uh, we still got love for all the baby boomers that are rocking with that. For those who are interested, who are listening and being a part of the podcast uh, network and community, feel free to click the link that we're putting in the comment section below to fill out one of our interest forms and our team will be able to look through your data uh, to see if you are in uh, proper alignment uh, with our motto and our mantra and our mission for the show. And so definitely we appreciate all this this morning. Uh, We are literally going to be taking Q&A shortly. We get ready to interview and bring on our guest. And so if you have any questions for our VIP guests, Feel free to put them in the comment section below if you are watching us with the live premiere of this episode or if you are on Wisdom or Twitter Spaces. uh, This is an interactive Q&A show. And so do not feel um, that you cannot come on the stage and ask any questions that you may have for my very special VIP guests. So those are all of my housekeeping. Shout out to uh, all of our wisdom and Twitter space listeners. Uh, today, we're going to be diving in to another popular subject. You know, we all talk about real estate um, periodically on the RTJ show. And especially we talk to investors and people who are in uh, the real estate uh, community. And so we're going to be talking about how to purchase international real estate as an investor. If you are someone who has thought about getting into investment properties outside of the U.S. or even if you're in a different continent or country that you're tuning in with us right now, if you're interested in purchasing real estate out of your home country or continent, uh, you're in the right place to be this morning. Uh, You're going to be hearing from uh, one of my very special guests. I just met uh, this young queen literally um, last month and I was at a uh, grand opening uh, for a studio uh, here in um, Marietta, Georgia, in Cobb County. And she was one of the best friends of the owner of the studio. Uh, studio. Shout out to uh, Ona and her team uh, with Adobe, Adobe Media. And uh, literally, I, I was talking uh, at the end of the event. I heard that she was an author uh, speaking to someone else. And we were all just uh, chilling and kicking back the event uh, grand opening was over. And I said, I definitely want you come on our podcast and speak to our audience about all the great work that you're doing uh, in the Caribbean and even overseas uh, real estate and also building uh, on land uh, in international culture and communities. And so without further ado, uh, she's an author, uh, she's a real estate investor, and she's most important. Uh, going to be talking to us about how to break into real estate internationally and even here domestically. And so I'm going to introduce you to my very special VIP guest, Miss Jessica 
Myers. Jessica, how are you this this uh, day? Jessica, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? I'm I'm doing very well. How are you feeling? Oh, we're doing well. We appreciate you, Queen and Arm, to rock with us uh, for our episode today. Uh, how we usually start the episodes, Jessica, uh, is tell us a little bit about your background. We us- we usually have our guests tell us uh, where you're originally from, your hometown. Um, tell our audience where you're streaming with us today. And then why is this an important subject for you to discuss with our audience? Well, it all start on a rainy night. I was just kidding. <laughs> I was born in Atlanta, Georgia um, here. Uh, and I grew up here actually in the 90s. And if you can imagine everything you knew, when they say Atlanta influences everything, we genuinely do. And to grow up to see that in our backyard, I grew up fearless thinking I could do anything. And Um, I feel like that was very important because you had a lot of our world leaders that grew up down the street from me. So a lot of the rights that they were fighting for internationally and publicly, I mean, just think about it. These were the people who were making up the the fabric of the city we grew up in, the schools, the programs, the leadership that I had exposure to. So my whole life, there were no limitations. It was literally think the sky is the limit and we have the resources here to help you grow. And by resources, I was involved in Black Data Processing Associates, which is BDPA. They are the number one tech company um, for Black people in tech. And they had a training program for kids. I used to do that when I was in high school. So I learned you know, a lot about the computer and software world. But then I realized that really I shined in helping sell the team, helping sell us, because you know we won uh, second place actually at a competition. So it actually was beneficial to start learning like, hey, I actually like being out front. And so actually that's where I started studying journalism and media. And I'm saying all these things because one of my favorite books, The Alchemist, speaks very much to the journey and how every element adds to who you are. So that's why I'm going into the different things that I've been involved with because after getting involved in tech, after getting involved in media, then I made it to the top of media because it was just like, hey, to be in media, you want to be in New York. So I found myself at CBS at the Nick Cannon Morning Show in New York in my early 20s. And when I made it there at the perceivable top, I was like, okay, what next? <laughs> What's next? And that's when I went on this journey of self-discovery because I realized like I often would climb the ladder. And they talk about corporate climbing the ladder. You climb the ladder and you get to the top and you're just like, it feels very hollow up here. And that's one of the things that my dad um, helped me to to learn about myself is that you weren't so busy climbing up the ladder that what if the ladder was on the wrong wall? Through that journey of self-discovery, that's when I understood about real estate. It was like, wait, how do I, because right now I'm trading time for money and I'm not getting the fulfillment because remember I have the media background, I have the tech background, and then now in real estate, because real estate was good because it focused me and it showed me process. Because all of my skills that I gained through corporate over time applied to the business world and real estate and understanding the process. That's how I ultimately was able to get my start as a wholesaler, which is like the intern for real estate or the entry rate. That way you, you find opportunity. As a wholesaler, you're often looking at people with issues and you are coming as the solutionist to their issues. And so doing that helped me to understand through real estate, you start to identify like, wait, all those abandoned houses that you pass, all of those things. I mean, really, they're just people going through situations and you can help them bring resolve. So through a lot of my business acumen that I gained in media, I documented the journey. And that's how I started, you know, with one house, with two houses. And then I was able to start seeing how people were buying houses as a wholesaler. And I was like, wait, well, if they put it together that way and structuring the deal and figuring it out. I'm the one who took the time and found the property and negotiated the deal. I can figure it out too. That's what I've been doing my whole corporate career. So I started, um, I started flipping myself. I was like, wait, I'm finding the deal. Let me go find the capital. And then I hired the team that puts together, you know, the specialties that I don't. And I didn't realize what I was doing at the time. To me, it just made sense because it's the same thing that I would do in corporate. If you needed somebody on the team and you didn't know how to do something, they will go hire your role. So ultimately, that's what I did as an entrepreneur. I started hiring vendors that were way smarter than me, way specialized, made way more specialized than me. And we were able to start doing bigger deals. And ultimately, I got into hotel ownership the same way, partnering with the right people that are specialists. And now we're building a resort in Exuma, Bahamas. 
but it all came from a process that started really in tech because tech really is a process that when duplicated, it allows for scalability and growth to whatever it is you do. But the most important part is understanding process. And that's what I've been able to master through my three-part process. I've noticed it in every deal from the $15,000 deal that I got my start with in real estate to the multi-million dollar hotel deal that we acquired as a team. I was able to use my three-part formula and that's the opportunity itself. That's what we learned as a wholesaler, how to identify the skill set and know how what to do with the opportunity. And this is where it's so important because most people try to study to, to get the skill set and know how. So for example, If I wanted to go fly to the Bahamas to go check on our projects down there, would I go study and learn to get my pilot license? And that may take 10 months. I think one of the shortest programs I've heard is like a 10 month thing, right? So go study to get my pilot license. Then how long will it take me to save up to buy my own plane? Then buy stewardess, then pay for gas. I mean, you see how I can go on and on and on and on and on to what all you have to buy. Prime example with your phone. A lot of you guys are watching either from your phone or your computer. How many hours did you spend? Like I said, I used to be in BDPA in Black Data Processing Associates. How many hours did you spend creating your phone, creating your computer? Or did you go to Verizon and you just purchased your phone? Or did you go to T-Mobile and you just purchased your phone? That is the same thing when you're talking about taking a flight to Jamaica. You will go purchase it from Delta. So why do the same thing when you are um, when you're looking for your vision and your dream? You look to go be the mayor, the sheriff, the bailiff, and all of that when you can go hire somebody who's been specializing their entire life to do what you do. For example, when I got into the hotel space, I was in the real estate arena. I was a developer and a builder in the real estate in the single family space. And a girlfriend of mine comes up and she's like, hey, I got 14, 15 years in hotels. Well, who do you think I'm going to go with when I want to go to the next level? I already know how to find opportunity and identify opportunity. Thankfully, through my business acumen, I know how to build teams and produce success. So with those skill sets and with her being a specialist and a master, I know that once we have the idea, with any idea comes the capital. Literally, that three-part formula, yes, when applied to real estate, it can get you in hotels. But that three-part formula applies to anything. Anything, any venture, you have your opportunity. And that is where can I get involved? Something that's undervalued, under market value, and then increase its value for sale or for market, something like that. Anything that you can find at pennies on the dollar, that's what you call opportunity. Something that has the potential that you know with your vision and your skill set, you can take it greater. Then you start building the people around you with that skill set so that you have defensibility to know that that plan is gonna work, that process is gonna repeat itself. Then you move it into the capital. And most people may be like, well, where do I get the money from? How do I get started? The capital literally comes with a plan. You'd be surprised how many people in your circle actually have money. Family and friends round actually boasts well. Um, That's how I've been able to raise millions of dollars from family and friends. Now, yes, I have a huge network, but it's through my consistency. It's the power. That's why I told you the story of journalism. It's the power of telling my story consistently on media platforms that has allowed more of my family and friends to tie in to the vision. Because more importantly, they invest in me. Because the projects, some projects have gone well, some projects not so well, but they invest in me. They invest in a person that they know that since I started my journey back in high school, that I've been consistently showing up to not only solve problems, but execute and see projects through. That's really what people invest in. And so if you are someone that's consistent with what you are, that's what people look for to invest. And that's how we've been able to amass all of the real estate that we have through collaborative economics. We did create a hedge fund to do it the legal way and have our structure together. And that's where we're building the resort in Izumo Bahamas. And that's what we formed to acquire a lot of our larger real estate. But it's really bringing it down to partnering with friends and family. When they see the consistency that you have, when they see um, you know, the plans that you have through a vision that you have, they will come and be a part of it. Whether it's money, you'd be surprised. You'll be surprised. I've had the shortest conversations with the people who sent me the most money. And I'm talking about six-figure money. And it's been the shortest five minutes. How much you need? Okay, you got the plan. Okay, let's go. So having the consistency, invest in yourself to play the part. Know what you're doing. 
And that's you having a process, that's new, you knowing your goal. And that is ultimately what helped me to succeed. I set a vision. Like that's almost like setting a destination. When you go into a road trip, you set the vision, you make it plain, and you allow others to buy in. And that's how I got my start. I love it. I love it, Queen. We definitely going to be hearing more about uh, the hedge fund. I know when you first told it, told me that's how you were getting the funding, I was like, yeah, this is this is a subject that a lot of our audience uh, needs to hear about. And that's when I said, Jessica, we got to follow up after today. And so for those who are listening on Wisdom, those who are listening on Twitter spaces, I'm here with my very special VIP guest, uh, Jessica Myers who's talking about how to fund and purchase international real estate as an investor. Jessica, we're going to give you a quick commercial break, Queen, so we can honor our VIP sponsor. And then we want to come back and hear more about the process of how you were able to fund uh, these projects. And so we're going to give you a commercial break. Uh, but each and every episode, you all, we highlight one of our VIP uh, sponsors for each of our episodes. And so if you are a business owner, you are someone uh, who is a uh, entrepreneur and you want to have your product or your service highlighted on our podcast uh, show or even our Smart Jewels Network uh, with other podcasts that we uh, either executive produced or uh, uh, produce as an associate producer, uh, feel free to click the link that we're putting in our comment section below. But let's take a look at the VIP uh, sponsor is for today, you all. Let's take a look. which comes from none other than Herb and Eden. And Eden is a wellness, um, a, a Black-owned wellness product business that's based here in Atlanta, Georgia. Specifically, use their products uh, when it comes to making sure our skin is right and it's natural and organic ingredients uh, that Herb and Eden uses with soaps, oils, scrubs, and they even have other products that they are launching on their line. So Urban Eden is our VIP sponsor for today. You can receive 15% off by clicking the link that we're putting in the comment section below. And also support uh, Urban Eden and check out their website, Herb and Eden, and receive an exclusive 15% off. Uh, just by being one of our Smart Jewel listeners. And also who our affiliate is that we use is StreamYard. StreamYard is the platform that we stream from every episode for RTJ. This, this episode is powered by StreamYard. You could also receive an exclusive $10 off discounted price on one of the packages that you join today. And so definitely big up to StreamYard as our affiliate partner for today. 
Uh, we stream to all platforms, YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, they don't have IG's IP open yet, but it is soon coming. But if you are wanting to get into the multi-streaming, definitely check out StreamYard today, you all. Shout out to Urban Eden, who is our VIP uh, sponsor for today. Uh, but let's get back to our interview because we got to see about how our VIP guest, Miss Jessica Myers, was able uh, to acquire some of this in some of these international products uh, that she was able to get into. And so, Jessica, we're going to bring you back on, Queen. Like, I know we just wanted to highlight our sponsor for today. Like, talk to us about uh, for people that don't know about a hedge fund just from breaking it down like what is a i know some of these terms and like how can one go about either getting into a hedge fund or even creating a hedge fund so a hedge fund is just a lot of legalese and ways that you get registered with the sec so that you can officially and publicly raise capital from people that you know um, within your community. And honestly, sometimes people you don't know. So a, a official hedge fund protects you and the investors that you're partnering with. Now it does regulate the types of deals you can do and the type of people that you can work with. Because a lot of times um, when you look at these larger deals, like when you, I, I know for me, when I heard about Facebook, um, you know, going public when we were younger, and, you know, being a part of Facebook since 2005, I was like, wait, I would have loved to be a part of that. And then a lot of the tech companies that you start hearing about going public and, you know, I would, I'm like, how are these people getting involved? Like, how did they know? And you start looking at the breakdown of how everyone got involved in these deals. And, you know, cause I always felt like I was going to be dope enough to be this wonderful, successful, uber rich billionaire. But then it's like a lot of the deals that were happening, it felt like they were happening in the back door. And that's when I learned about accredited investors. That's when I learned um, these are individuals with a net worth of at least a million dollars or greater um, in your asset holdings. And you have uh, you're bringing in an income of at least 250,000 or more. Now, if you're married and, you know, all of that, you can look that up to see, you know, what those specific numbers will be because they change. But just in general, understanding what an accredited investor was was new for me. And understanding that, and this is the way that these backdoor deals are done through hedge funds, through venture capitalists that invest in hedge funds. Um, so you can get your money either way. You can start a hedge fund and you get money and raise it from the public, or now you can get venture capitalists to invest in your hedge fund, or you can join a hedge fund and join forces and take advantage of all of the things that they have because they spend a lot of money with the legalese, right? But they can partner with you and you can pay into a hedge fund that's already created that's seeking venture capitalist, or it has, um, you know, you can partner with them to bring in other investors. Like we work with a lot of investor groups, a part of our hedge fund um, for people that have organized efforts to invest in larger real estate. But the point of this is it has, like I was mentioned, we're big on process. We're big on infrastructure. And so it sets the process up of how to do real estate and how to do so effectively and how to do so as a team. It brings us together so that legally we're analyzing these deals and we're making sure that they work for the hedge fund, that we're bringing back enough capital that feeds you know, us as the hedge fund managers and it also feeds the investors that are partnered into the deal. And also, you know, if, if you have any venture capitalists involved, you want to make sure that they can get a payout as well. So it helps you to keep things in order and in line and making sure your process is together. Now, the larger your hedge fund is, the more, you know, the the harder it may be to get things done, to move. But because we're smaller, we're nimble. We can do things like take a risk in international investing. We can take a risk in our hotel portfolio that we've been able to acquire here um, because we just set the vision and be like, OK, this is what we're going to do. This is our next step, because that's what we talked about before. Setting the vision. Where are we going to go? I set a vision when I got into real estate that I would acquire 1000 doors. And this is my journey. How? through creating a hedge fund, through bringing together collaborative economics so that we can acquire 1,000 doors. Now, yes, we've acquired a couple hundred so far through hotel acquisitions, but now being able to invest internationally, it takes your, your money and the experience a lot further. For example, um, you know, one of my friends who's actually working on a franchise in Mexico, 
It cost him about $250,000 to open up that same franchise here in the States from the building to all of the material and all of the costs plus capital and all of those things. To get started with that same concept and that same project in Mexico cost him $50,000. So it's a fraction of the cost. And then we started talking about experience. Where we're building our resort in Exuma, Bahamas, our micro villas have done amazing here in Atlanta. Amazing. But when you're talking about bringing that to the Bahamas, you get tenfold. You get to bring that same modern build experience. And now you get to bring it to international audience, um, somebody who may not have experienced that before. So we get to do it differently. And with the marketing that we have and the platform that we have, we get to direct our 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 audience to go down and enjoy, um, you know, our our property down in the Bahamas, which increases tourism. This is how you rebuild economies. And so because of that, a lot of people internationally are actually begging for you to come. They're like, hey, calm down, calm down. Uh, we need you to bring the development. Why? Because that brings tourism. And with tourism, rebuilds economies. And a lot of these countries that may not have the affluence and the resources and the access that we have here in the States, they gladly appreciate a pinch of it. Like if you can bring a pinch of it, if you can, you, they know how powerful our social media is. They know how powerful the pictures are. And they're like, if you can bring a pinch of that, we will make any concessions. Like um, I had another investor telling me about some work that he was doing down in the PR in Puerto Rico. And he was like, they give you 40% back on your ventures. And I was like, wait, what? So how do you do this, right? You start having the conversation. Remember, you take my three-part formula. But a part of that skill set and know-how, right? So you got the opportunity itself. The opportunity is where you want to invest. And I would invest where you feel the most comfortable and where you have the most contacts and where it's easy to get to. But I want to make sure that you have your process down packed in the States before going out of the States. So we've been developing um, real estate since 2017. So I've gotten the process down of development. So I was able to take this process down to do the same thing and replicate it in a different market. But once we started doing that, and like I said, from a journalism, I've been sharing my story. So as a journalist sharing my story online, my partners, I encourage them to share their, their stories online too. So now we get governments that reach out to us all across the country. I mean, all across the globe. Literally, we've had, you know, some magistrate in Ghana reach out, magistrate in Belize, in um, Nairobi, in South Africa. People have reached out to us from all across the globe because they was like, hey, we have land. And they understand that with land, which is opportunity, we bring our skill set and know-how we bring our capital through our partners, and then now we're able to acquire these deals collectively and together. But we have to have a plan of attack. And that's where the process of organization of your entity, of your company to get these deals done, provide solutions, and you can expand your portfolio immensely, especially when you do it with a group and you do it together. If I did all this by myself, I would still be flipping one house at a time. But the power of collaborative economics allows us to do this together and the power of collaborative thought. Like imagine you thinking through a solution, but 10 other people thinking through that same solution with their lens, even more compounds the complexity of the problem you're able to solve. So that's how we're able to do this through networking, through growing our vision, making it bigger. And the clearer we make it, the more capital we're able to generate and make through our hedge fund and through partnering and collaborating with investors to make it happen. Uh, that's a ton of job for you all and myself. And I'm sure that we are learning how to together uh, so sorry about that. Literally hit it, hitting on the head the importance in doing um, into all of us who are listening. Says when you go to and so all of these jewels. Uh, that are being dropped for today's episode. Do not take them for granted. Uh, for now, we're opening up Q&A to our Wisdom and Twitter space audience uh, because we want to let you all um, talk to just have, uh, I'm just going to 
in the Q&A uh, if we don't get any questions uh, coming from our wisdom or Twitter. Our live Q&A, you're hearing from Jessica uh, speaking about how she was able to fund uh, her projects, especially for those who may not have heard of hedge funds. You just got a crash course on literally how to either invest in your own hedge fund or invest in others hedge fund uh, that you are wanting to get involved in. Came to the part of growing up, like, did you grow up? Learn how to get into the real. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, cool. Yeah, they're trying to hate on you, dropping too many jewels, Queen, out there. They they hating on us, but just asking, like, when you were, did you have any family or friends that were in? real estate um that you could see or that you gleam from or were you having any uh, who mm -hmm. were putting you on game like how did you uh, get into real estate so um and and this is why I, it's so important for me to talk about my backstory because i realized that it's a pattern of who i am because even when getting into technology like i mentioned in high school i joined an organization called Black Data Processing Associates. And even when I was in high school, I joined an organization. When I got into media in my later years in college, I was joining organizations. I was networking. And every media job that I've gotten has always been from networking, the power of networking. So when I got into real estate, I didn't know anyone that I could touch that was in real estate to the magnitude I was in. I had um, you know, neighbors and colleagues and friends like that that were in the construction part of it. But I was going in as an investor, so I did not necessarily have that exposure, but I knew from the same way that I got exposed to media and learned about the best and the brightest at the top and all of those resources, I knew that I can apply that same thing to real estate. So I started going to networking events. And that's ultimately how I met plenty of mentors that helped me to get started. Because other than that, it was, well, I got less than $1,400 to my name. What really can I do? I did take educational courses and they taught me enough to get me excited to be dangerous, but it was still a lot of money at risk and at play if I don't know what I'm doing. So I began to surround myself with people that were way smarter than me in areas that I had no clue in. Like, I'm not going to get around somebody who's smarter than me in the same thing that I already know, but getting around people that are smarter than you. And most times you find this at networking events. Most, um, cities, most major cities have what's called a RIA, a Real Estate Investor Association. Because in most cities that you live in, there is real estate. There is real estate. And there's somebody in the back planning it. Even if you don't have a RIA that's accessible to you, go to meetups, go to Facebook, find people to network with, as well as networking with government officials. Don't sleep on it because especially when you do international investing, that's who you want to tap in with. Because nobody going to tell you more what's legit and what's not in another country than the government. Don't be scared of them. They actually welcome you to invest because you bring dollars that they are not getting locally. You bring dollars and build economy, especially when you come internationally. They know you bring in an audience with you. You bring in American dollars. Everybody look like, you got them American dollars. Bring them over here. They will start cutting concessions. What you need? You need tariffs cut? What you need? They will start helping you in your process a lot more than you think because they want to provide the resources to help build their economy. But it all starts from building a team, which all starts from having a vision. Be clear on where you're going. The team and the funds will come, but get in the right rooms to network. But you have to have your vision clear when you go to these networking events, because I can send 10 people in to talk. They're not talking about a valid business reason or something to bring them all together. They'll never accomplish and achieve what they're looking to do. So you have to go in with a vision and a goal. Get around networking events, because that's ultimately what helped to change my life. When what seemed impossible became possible with the number of people that I was able to meet.
So if you are looking to get started and you got every excuse in the book, look up an association in the vein of which you want to do. Maybe real estate, go join Real Estate Investor Associations, REIA, R-E-I-A, is literally like a thing. Find the one closest to you. Some of them are virtual. Some of them are in person. And go network. Meet at, You should be meeting at least 10 new people a week because you are one relationship away from changing your life. Anything you feel is impossible, you are one relationship away from changing your life. Just like you were saying, we were at this networking event, and that's how we connected. You are one relationship away from changing your life. So get out and start networking. Get out of your head. You don't need to know all the data. You don't need to know how to fly a plane to get on Delta. So stop being scared to fly. Are you ready? So one of the things that, you know, I always advocate for people to do um, is get around people that are smarter than you, but you really want to sit with your plan. And what is your plan? Plan it out to play it out. That's huge for me. Like they say, if you're going to spend four hours to chop down an axe, you spend the first three developing the strategy and sharpening your knife. That is the approach that I've taken in real estate and everything that I've been doing is how to break it down into actionable steps so that you can actually get started. Because even with me in the development process, we came up with a four-part formula that we actually teach students from, like how to acquire. You, dis you have your discovery phase. And this is your feasibility study where you understand what all are you doing. Discovery. What am I doing? What do I have access to and all of this? Then your design phase, your design is building out what you wanted to look like, because it's one thing to be in your head, but it's another to get what's in your head, out of your head, on paper, into a what? Process. That's what I've been talking about this entire time. Process. The power of process. So you go from discovery, which is understanding what it is possible. And that's where you can talk to your local government. You can talk to other investors. You can look in the market and see what's going on. Like I get we want to be different. We want to come in and and have the most unique thing. But sometimes there's a reason stuff works. And why not just stick with what works to get my oxygen mask on first and then expand and grow from there. And that's where um, that's one of the things that I literally plan it out to play it out. And I have my discovery. Then I have design. And that's where you get it out of your head and into paper. Then you get the development. That's actually how the nuts and bolts and how it gets done. Now, if you are not a builder, don't go try to be one overnight. That's when you have a relationship with one and you bring them to the table. And then you have the delivery. You have, you have discovery, design, development, and delivery. And delivery is the creative exit strategies that you employ to get back on par. And that's one of the things that we're able to do um, through our network is that we're able to plan it out, to play it out, and bring in all of the people to help make it happen. If you just think, for example, how many phones does Steve Jobs build? I'll wait. How many, how many boards do you think he sat with and was like, you know what? I'm going to build and develop this iPhone. Or did he have the vision that I'm going to connect the world through a different way in technology? Um, and he just stuck with the vision and he had a team of smart people around him to help him get back together. That's what I tell people to do. Why go try to become the person who does every aspect of the thing when you can just partner and collaborate with those who specialize? Like when I went to get in the hotel space, take years and years and years and climb the corporate ladder. When I partnered with the per person who already did that, she did that. And then the resources and the team that she amassed with the vision and the business acumen that we were able to bring together, we're able to have successful ventures through time and time again. And that's how we're able to rinse and repeat. And that's been the vein of our success. So it's really been, um, you know, really been a journey. It's almost like how vast can you think? How, how big can you grow? Um, I actually, my cousin, she's a fish aficionado and she had this goldfish. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I saw goldfish on Dr. Seuss, they were really small and really tiny because then you get them in the bag and then you put the bag in the little bucket. And then, you know, as a child, it's just really exciting to see the little goldfish in in the bag. 
right? And so you get really excited about seeing the little goldfish. And then, you know, maybe they die. And then I think the parents replace them. So the kids don't see it. But it was just always this little goldfish. Now, when I went to my friend's uh, aquarium, she has this huge aquarium. because she, She's won awards for her aquarium. And it, it's amazing, right? But she had the biggest goldfish that I ever did see. And I was like, it was literally like this big. Now, one of my friends, she was like, she gave her uh, her goldfish like fried chicken. So I think that's why her her goldfish was a little bigger. But for my other friend, she did not give her goldfish fried chicken. But she did express that because she kept them in a bigger container. Because she kept the fish in a larger container, that's how the fish were able to get so big. And that more than anything was like, oh my gosh, where else have I been playing small because the environments I've been in have been small-minded people. Where else have I been playing small? Like I had no clue goldfish got above the little bag that we saw because I'd never been in environments that allowed me to get that expansive or allowed fish to get that expansive until recently. So it's not the fried chicken that changed it. It was the environment that changed it. Then I began to learn like fish actually grow to the capacity of the environment that they're in. So if they're made of water and they're in water and we're made of mostly water, what do you think is happening? We naturally grow to the degree of the environment that we're in. That's why I talk about the power of networking, because networking will put you in rooms of people with experiences that you will never get. I, I don't know if through my life I ever want to get to the point where I got 10 years of flight experience. I'd rather pay Delta and keep it moving. I don't need to become a pilot to say that I've experienced that. And that's the same way with you. Get clear on where you are in your vision. Get clear on what you provide. I always look at it like Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin has almost 14 Grammys, or if not 14, has 14 Grammys. But very few people, besides Tamla Man, because they always name Tamla Man, but very few people can name specific singers that he has amassed through the years. Name, name, try to name one soprano that you know outside of Tamla Man. Tamla Man did make it pretty popular, but outside of Tamla Man, name at least one singer that you know that is sung with Kirk Franklin. But yet, this man has 14 Grammys. And that's what I want people to understand it's the power of partnership. Because he has the vision, because he has the creativity, creativity to bring teams together, to amass some of the baddest sopranos, some of the best tenors, some of the baddest altos that you ever did hear or see. But because he has the talent to bring them together, because he amasses them in a way and has the vision for the creativity that he wants to go, they win every time. It don't matter who on the team. It don't matter if I flew Delta or Spirit. What matters is I got there. And I, I don't know about driving Spirit now. <laughs> Y'all can fly Spirit. But Spirit spirit don't always get you there. But that's what I mean by the consistency. But you want to make sure that you're building your team with the best and the brightest, with the smartest people around you. Because protecting your space, protecting your environment is really what chooses the altitude for which you wish to grow. They used to say a lot of times when I was growing up that your, your network is your net worth. And I was like, okay, that sounds cute. And then I, I heard another thing where it was saying that you are as close to your closest or your your income ratio is within five, I think like five or 10,000 of the five people that you hang around the most. So imagine the five people that you hang around the most, you guys probably have the same income. Why? Because you have the same habits. Ah, here's really where we get to the magic. I know people want me to get to the nuts and the bolts, but you can get in a deal. I mean, that's easy to get into a deal, to sustain the deal, to sustain the mindset of what it takes to stay in the deal. That's the complexity of which you have to go through and you have to build through. And that's one of the things that I've been mastering on this journey is how to keep my head in the right mindset so that I can achieve even greater. But that's about protecting your space. Everybody can't get access to me. Everybody doesn't get to just call and talk and, and air out their problems. You have to be in my circle to get that. So how many of you guys need to get the scores about your circle? How many of you guys need to take an audit on what you're listening to? What goes in all of your gates? What are you spending your time watching? What are you spending your time listening to? And what are you spending your time creating? 
Because the more you're listening to the environment and those around you, you're finding the problem that you're solving and how you can create a solution. And when you always start from there, you can tie real estate into anything that you do. And once you get a process, you can apply technology to that and be even more expansive and be even further in your reach. So that's the power of what we've been able to create. We've been able to identify processes, like I said, even for development. We have discovery, design, development, delivery. Then for, you know, we're talking about building. Um, you know, we have our process and everything that comes along with that. And my three-part formula that has helped me to close deals all across the globe, literally from having the opportunity itself. That means I've gone in, I've discovered what it is that I'm looking to build. I've gotten the skill set and know-how. There's a certain sector or team that needs to be involved in every deal. And that's the one, an attorney. You want to make sure that, especially in entrepreneurship, there is no boss, there is no HR, there is no corporate company to go to, but you really want to get into, um, you really want to get into partnering with the people who have the skills, but using an attorney to make sure that they got contracts to make sure that your partnerships are upheld. Because there is no HR that you can go to and complain and they get you back on track. It definitely is, um, you know, having the right team. And a lot of times the attorneys are going to be right there to determine who is right and who is wrong. So you want to have the attorneys there on the front side so that they so that they really help you to get back on track and keep your deal in line. There is no worse thing then getting involved and partnering with someone who said that they're going to do X and do Y. That is the main thing that breaks up deals, partnerships, and everything. Because it's all great in the beginning. Everything is all great in the beginning. You're friends, you're hanging out, you're going to lunch, you're talking about your ideas, you're stretching it. You're stretching it and you're making it happen. But that's not always, that's not always the case and always, you know, what, what you what you want to happen when someone does X and, or they say X and they do Y. That's what breaks up families. That's what breaks up friendships. That's what breaks it up. And unfortunately, that's going to happen over the time, Because especially you're not talking about getting rich overnight. Now, if it was a one one day project, a two day project, great. But you're talking about partnering with people for years. Like some of our projects, our real estate projects um, can take years. That's why I'm like, don't look at the, the opportunity itself. Look at the habits. Where's the consistency? That's one of the things I was saying. People invest in the person. The deal may go up. It may go down. It may go sideways. It may go left. It may go right. But you're dealing with the person. What contract do you have with the person? And that's when an attorney helps you to iron out the contracts. And they're, they're helping to protect your vision. Because it's one thing to acquire something. Most people just think about how do I get into it? How do I get into it? But a lot of times you may not have what you think you desire or what you need because you're not ready defensively. You're not ready to defend what you have because it's one thing to get it. But what are your defenses that you have in place to keep you from losing it? And so who else would you need on your team to help you defend your property? You would need an attorney. You would need an insurance agent, maybe a tax professional or an accountant that can help you keep a, keep charge of the expenses. What about an appraiser that can help you see the value? And think about what other specialists that you would need to help get your venture accomplished and achieved. But that's not just setting the goal. You have to set the goal for what the vision is for everybody coming together in the first place. My goal and my vision with what we were building was to generate 1,000 doors. Now, going back to the goldfish, how did I get 1,000 doors? It really was 100. And when I said 100, honestly, I only had 10 or less than 10. I had less than 10 houses in my portfolio when I made and declared 100. But then I heard Grant Cardone say, 10X your dream and your vision. I was like, 10X? Like, why? That's the goldfish analogy. Because it's, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you, it works. If I could explain the science behind it, I would probably understand humanity and be able to clone. So I don't know what it is, but it works. I'm telling you, put your vision down and 10 exit. Because whatever your vision is, even the most money you could think about ever getting and seeing, because, you know, sometimes like, what's the most money you've envisioned and seen in your bank account? So I felt like, man, I, I've never thought about that. I, ain't, I mean, my bank account is my bank account. Like how much money, what is the most you've ever seen in your bank account? And it's like, okay, 
Well, at the time, the most I'd ever thought about seeing was like maybe a hundred thousand dollars. I was like, I never thought about seeing millions. So how could I ever expect to get to millions if I never saw that? Just like the goldfish in the small package didn't know probably that you could get so big. Like I, I'm telling you, that that goldfish was pretty sizable. I never seen the goldfish that big, but I realized it was the environment that it was in. You grow to the environment that you're in. So the most money you could ever see in your account or that you could ever think about is the most that you've been exposed to in your environment. So that's why you have to, whatever that most you thought about in your head that you can do, you can dream, that you can see, 10 exit. 10 exit. I guarantee you. And trust me. Because it's so funny. Like I said, I didn't even have one or two when I said I wanted 100. I didn't even have that. So the hundred was a huge stretch for me. But the first hotel we got into was 85 doors. I was like, wait, I almost said a hundred right there. A thousand, a thousand me, please. 10 X my vision because you set your initial vision. I guarantee you, if you go back and look at your goals or what you first did when you first got exposed to getting involved in whatever it is you're doing, your first, your first goals and your first visions weren't to the magnitude of what you were capable of and what you could truly make happen. That's why you have to stretch yourself. And that's where networking is so important because not only does it help you build your team and those people that are on your team, but networking helps you see beyond your current circumstances. Because I guarantee you, you overthinking the money in your account and the ratio to get involved in real estate and the other person looking like, okay, how many hundreds of thousands? And you hear them talk about so much money in these real estate events. You looking like, I ain't got but fourteen hundred dollars in my name. They just talked about doing a half a million dollar. Like the guy, he was like, "Oh yeah, we've done up to eight hundred million dollars in this networking event so far." Eight hundred million? I can't even fathom how to get a thousand. But yet, this guy is easily and effortlessly talking about eight hundred million. So as I begin to come to these events, I begin to spend time with these people outside of the event and I schedule informational interviews, I began to put myself in environments where people had different circumstances because I was limited to what I could see and what I could put together with my current circumstance in my environment. But I started to expand my network. So that's why I often say you are one deal away from changing your life. You are one person away from changing your life because the right person can come in with a different set of circumstances and shift everything that you have going on. But you got to stay focused, though. And the focus comes from setting the goal. I get it. We all want to be rich. We all want to be financially free. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Like when I really, you know, I, even when I was in corporate America and I was working in media, I was really like, OK, I'm going to set a goal. I want to make ten thousand dollars a month or greater. I was like, OK, I can do ten thousand. No problem. Didn't realize it took forty thousand to make ten thousand. So what does that mean? My goal needs to be bigger. So cool. I said it for 80,000. Well, guess what? It takes a hundred plus thousand to generate 80 plus thousand. Like it was, it gets exponential. So I was like, okay, rather than chase the money, let me chase the impact and the milestones. So for the real estate, I was like, let me set a thousand doors. Mind you, when I set that a thousand, cause I 10 X my vision. I only saw in my immediate circumstances less than 10. So that's where you have to really decide where are you limiting yourself based on your current circumstances? If you start talking about international investing and the first thing people want to know is what are the numbers? What are the numbers? I want to get into the numbers. But what I say is if you get into the plan and the vision, with the vision and the plan comes people that want to be a part of your venture, comes the resources, and you start telling people about your vision and your plan. Next thing you know, you have abundance. I've mentioned my plan to at least 15 people in the last week. When I tell you the amount of resources that they poured into the vision, how they've been able to show up and accomplish and come together for the team, oh my gosh. Like it has been, it has been one thing after another. But I will say that it's been an exciting venture. And that's one of the things, like, I feel so many people come and they're like, well, we just want to get to the numbers. We just want to get to the nuts and bolts. And then you start talking about the mindset. You start talking about things that they need to achieve, ways to sit still and find that inner voice to go greater, to go higher. And then 
you start seeing like, this is where the consistency comes. This is where you got the mastery of the greats. This is where by all powers combined, because you start to see that it's a bigger force than you. Because I realized that even having, you know, <laughs> hey, welcome back. Welcome back. Having the, I was just talking about mentality and having the right mentality and staying in the right growth mindset and having the people around you in the right environment to keep you focused, to keep you on set and on track for your goals and to achieve. No, nah, you were you were uh you were dropping so many jewels, Queen. They done kicked myself and our, our tech team out. You were dropping so much jewels <laughs> out there, you all. I yeah. I was just literally um trying to reset our internet so my team and myself uh, for for Jessica's interview could get back in you all. She was dropping a ton of, of jewels. And so for those who were uh, listening for our episode today, y'all need to go and for sure support Jessica and see exactly what this woman on a mission, uh, international mission is all about you all. Yeah. Uh, but I know Jessica, when we wanted to give you uh, just the final uh, spotlight before we get ready to close. We thank you for dealing with all of the, the glitches and mm -hmm. any of the technical issues today, Queen. Uh, we always allow our guests uh, to leave the final jewel of wisdom. Uh, I know mm -hmm. you talked about a ton, I'm sure, uh, while we were mm -hmm. troubleshooting to try <laughs> to get, get, even get back in uh, to make sure that we can, we can um, uh, conclude our interview today. But uh, what would be, Jessica, a final jewel of wisdom, a final nugget that you would want to leave uh, with our audience uh, just to let mm -hmm. let them know uh, why they need to get involved uh, in real estate and even why they should even want to be involved uh, in uh, the real estate game domestically or internationally? Well, um, for one, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. And um, feel free to reach out to me on all major platforms at it's Jessica Myers dot com. It's just or it's Jessica Myers. And then go to my website. It's Jessica Myers dot com. But all social media platforms, ITS Jessica M Y E R S. And then it's Jessica Myers dot com. Um, as far as like the nugget of getting involved, like one of the things that I was saying of having the goal and putting yourself in an environment and 10 xing your vision. Going back to that, you never know how far you can go until you go too far. You never know how far you can go until you go too far. You don't know how far a rubber band can stretch. You don't know to the magnitude to which you can go. So test yourself, try yourself, and plan and envision beyond your current circumstance, and you'll always reach to new heights. So if you ain't never been international before, go get your passport. But know that you are much stronger than you think you are, and you know. And as you set the vision, as you put in consistent action, you will get your desired results as long as you stay consistent. So as always, you know, you got it. Let's get it.